Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me sat in my van by the side of the road on a fairly grim day in Snowdonia. Uh, I got up early um, to partly to beat the weather, partly just to get a head start on the day. Um, and I got distracted by the Formula One Grand Prix qualifying, so I'm out at a normal time actually. And it's a bit drizzly now. It was snowing a minute ago, but now it's just turned to proper Welsh drizzle. I'm gonna get out anyway. I will put my brave pants on and kit up and get out on the hill. Today's video is about technology in the mountains. Excuse the road noise. Um, if I have the door shut, it's very dark in here. Um, technology in the mountains, because Coros, who make uh, nice watches, have kindly sent me a Vertex 2 to test out. Um, it's just on loan, it's not to keep, or it's not paid or anything, so it's an impartial chat about it. I'm not using the word review, because uh, I'm not gonna go through like every last feature on the watch. I just wanna put it into the context of how I use technology in the mountains. My original plan was to go up onto Glidavac and do a scramble up there. It's kind of remote-ish crag, proper mountain crag. I was going to do something, I wasn't really sure what, like maybe main gully or shark's nest or something, but you know, discretion is the better part of valour and all that, and it is looking pretty grim out there, so maybe that will kind of go into the video a bit, the sort of the whole context of decision making and what have you out in the hills as well and how technology may affect that. Uh, so, you know, it's all, all part of the game, isn't it? Getting out and about and making these decisions. So uh, I will get out, like I say, so um, you'll join me in a minute, a little bit colder, a little bit wetter and a little bit further in the hills. Well, I said down there that you'd, you'd see me out on the hill and I'd be a bit colder uh, and a bit wetter. Well, walking up that hill, I was not cold at all. In all these layers, I was flipping roasting. It's starting to snow again now. It was lovely a minute ago. I'm gonna put my gloves back on while I'm chatting. Uh, yeah, it was lovely. It was still, I was really warm. The blue sky was coming out and now I stopped there. It's, well, it could be even worse than snow. It might be turned to hail, possibly my least favorite thing weather-wise in the world. Um, looking up. Uh, Glidavac over there. Well, it's a quality uh, crag. Uh, it's kind of all, it's too big to call a crag, really, almost. Um, there's loads of good scrambles on it. Lots of really good rock climbs as well. You can see it is looking pretty white, though, so I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, yeah, I, I did uh, one day of my MCI, Mountaineering Climbing Instructor Assessment, up there. We went up uh, a grade three of flipping wet that day, a grade three called Main Gully Ridge. I think it's grade three anyway, and we came down Dolman Ridge, which is another grade three. Um, but we were roped up, uh, so it was me sort of leading two people, and we'd swap around me and the other person being assessed on eight dunks. Before we even got there, though, we had to navigate our way up because the weather was, uh, although it was, it was wet it wasn't as cold as this but it was couldn't see a thing proper pea super so yeah probably see like 50 meters so my leg was to navigate up to a pond up there uh which wasn't too bad i was very thankful to hit that pond because of being assessed in that but mate dunks had to navigate across to the actual route itself which is quite tricky in that kind of complex terrain actually because it's hard to sort of pinpoint the start of some of these things on the map so it's not the same as me taking bearings and whatever to a pond he had the harder deal out of that lot for sure he did sort of the theme of this video was kind of about technology um on our instructor assessments the vast majority of stuff has to be done just using basic map and compass kind of stuff when we're talking about navigation so no gps's that was bearings pacing you know os map that kind of stuff um if i was actually working and needing to get up there and the viz was like it was to be honest, I'd just get my phone out. I'd, I'd use um, you, uh, the OS app on there and the maps on my phone. I can follow the little arrow. Away I go, chatting to my clients, having a, a nice time and just one less thing to worry about really, isn't it? People, like hardcore mountain people, can be pretty down on technology in the mountains, um, especially when it comes to navigation. And it's an interesting concept. Like I've driven here, that's technology, but that's so ingrained in society, we don't give that a second thought, and I'm not suggesting that we should be walking to the crags, although buses and things, that's a good idea, uh, environmentally, of course. Um, bus service is improving in Snowdonia this year, which is ace. Um, even before that, though, uh, I knew it was going to snow. I checked the weather forecast. When I first started coming in the mountains, when I was sort of 15 and stuff, my parents would buy me an open train ticket up here and just let me come up and explore as ace. Um, 
fax machine. Some of you watching this may not even know what a fax machine is, old school. Um, I'd have to type in a number in the fax machine and then I think the company was called Metfax. They would send me a mountain forecast back and it would print out uh, like dot matrix style. Uh, it was really exciting to have that thing come through. Uh, and now there's so many options. I can get in my phone, the computer, um, and there's loads of different uh, options. There's Met Office, YR, the two I use a lot, and the best mountain one, really, Mountain Weather Information Service, MWIS, uh, use that loads. In the winter, because it's pretty wintry, um, Scottish Avalanche Information Services is the best uh, thing in terms of uh, avalanche forecasts, snow conditions, and they have some weather on there as well. We'd be negligent if we didn't use that sort of side of technology in terms of work and it just starts looking after ourselves as well really isn't it so some technology we're kind of okay with before i've even left the house i haven't brought the guidebook with me you might think that's a crazy idea i know these routes pretty well but actually that's not what i'm doing I'm not relying on that what i've done if i find the right page i've just i uh, hope that'll come out on the camera um i've just found the page and i've taken photos of it so i've taken photos of the pages photos of the topos the topos are flipping good in these books these days i'll flash up better pictures if it's not showing up on the phone all taken by drones and stuff like that technology love it great a better guidebook even on the pictures in the guidebook uh, got GPS coordinates, there's even like a QR code to scan that so it'll open up in your map so um, I think that goes through to like your your phone in terms of like Google Maps or Apple Maps whatever you're using, just going to put my hood up because it is pretty disgusting now so I'm happy to use all that tech, for sure I am, I love it and most people are as well but you'll hear so many people uh, saying oh you shouldn't shouldn't use your phone for navigating in the mountains you should use a map and compass i've always got a map and compass in my bag i try and keep it in my bag if possible because um i just you know i love navigating with a map and compass uh i love the skill of it i love the old fashionedness of it it's brilliant look at this it's tiny as well look it's only a few inches um 15 centimeters or so compass is in there as well this is the harvey's one waterproof paper that's north snowdonia it's great but i want to keep it in my bag it's all about being efficient isn't it if i'm working as well sometimes i'm teaching navigation obviously we have to use map and compass for that kind of thing but if I'm like guiding, if I was guiding up there, then my clients don't want to see me, you know, wasting time in effect looking at a map and compass. Just want me to get there. Uh, so a phone with the apps on that can just make life a lot quicker in my mind. Yeah, of course, it, the battery can die. The GPS uh, can go because most phones don't actually have proper GPS. So they're not as accurate as a standalone device. I haven't carried a standalone device for years in the mountains, though, I must admit. Um, the phone is like good enough. It works well yeah okay like I say battery can die so maybe take a power pack but think about a map and compass this hail is crazy now <laughs> pretty bouncing off the camera and everything uh it's all good for effect though um but yeah the, the map can blow away the compass can get a bubble that's too big to use properly for bearings and stuff i can just leave it on the floor as well as you can with anything really um I, there's pros and cons to both of course there is i think in conjunction though you know we need to know how to use a map and compass but actually a lot of the time a phone is going to be absolutely you know for me the right answer and a good enough answer i think there's too much focus on um saying the phones are the wrong thing to use rather than teaching people how to use the phone but how to use a map and compass as well now the watch i'm going to come on to the watch in a second with the decision making look up there i'm on my own it's hailing it's snowing for me, it's not the right answer to go up there today. Now, I'm not saying uh, in a judgmental way that no one else should. I'm just thinking for me, I'm on my own. It's slippy, it's wet. All I've got is a helmet. I don't want to be faffing with a rope in terms of lead soloing and stuff like that. It'd just take forever. So for me, I'm calling it today. When I was younger, I might have just gone for it. Um, older, wiser, more experienced, uh, and you know, vicariously other people's experience as well. It's just telling me that it's not a good choice today. It's slippy, it's wet, there's snow on the ledges, um, it, the mountains will be there another day, and so I can come back. Um, if I was with a mate and we were roping up, then I'd probably go for it, wrapped up, good technology, more technology, isn't it? Gore-Tex layers and Primaloft, that's all technology that we are massively fond of, isn't it? We're not wearing wool and getting soaking wet. 
again more technology that we're happy with so if it's with a mate and roped up it could be a perfectly safe thing to do wouldn't it um so i'd be happy to do it but just i, I think today discretion like i said earlier i think is the better part of valor so i'm not going to go for that today the um i forgot where i put it now on oh, my watch i was wearing it but i took it off for the video so the Coros uh vertex 2 a lovely watch nice bright orange looks looks the part doesn't it in terms of being an, an active uh, sort of uh, smart watch um, as the mountain flavor i'm gonna put my gloves back on it's flipping cold it's not what i signed up for uh, i always expect it to be summer when i come back from spain what do i want from a, a mountain watch because I, I do wear watches in the mountains but not all the time now my phone does a lot of these things as well which is why i don't always wear a watch my normal watch is a Garmin Fenix 5 so probably you know a little bit dated now but it does the job but what do I what do I want from a watch well yeah I want it to tell the time quickly and date and what stuff this next one sounds a bit silly but I want a stopwatch on it that's not silly in itself but actually a lot of these smart watches it's a pain to get to that feature so I want it easily accessible um, I want an altimeter and I want a, a GPS for kind of location but also for the altimeter because I'd, I'd rather have a GPS personally altimeter as well as the barometric one because especially in the UK our weather changes a lot so you have to reset a, a pressure uh, version so the GPS version is better for me um, and so that yeah the GPS for navigation mostly for measuring distance and also for getting a grid reference like an OS grid reference because I'm based in the UK we use OS grid reference uh, ordnance survey if you're not from the, the UK that's what that stands for so that's how we locate ourselves that's pretty much it if I'm honest um, I don't need it like this one does to be able to download music on it got my phone if I want that I don't need it to control my Insta360 I haven't got one but I wouldn't want it anyway I've got a GoPro again my phone does that um, uh, yeah mapping the trouble on most uh, with most watches the mapping just isn't that great I guess that's due to licensing issues with people like OS and Harvey's and stuff like that so it really isn't that much use to me I personally don't download uh, I don't track my route to download it I, I track it for a navigational sense of being able to backtrack and stuff like that I don't preload routes onto a watch either which obviously you can do on, on pretty much most of them including this one because uh, it's just not the kind of thing I, I use but that, that's a good way of navigating potentially isn't it but again I'd probably use my phone bigger screen OS maps that kind of thing so Actually, if I was designing a watch, it would be properly pared down, stripped down, just a, a few buttons, super simple to use. Now, this has just got a few buttons. It is, it's super clear to use, big numbers, easily glanceable at. It does loads of stuff on top of what I want. It's got my heart rate, you know, I, I don't, because I'm not using it as a fitness watch, I'm not trying to operate in a particular band to, you know, target my training or anything like that. Uh, I, I know my heart rate is about, 46 ish um when at resting and funnily enough when i'm exercising it gets higher that's all i that's all i care about if it gets too high i'm knackered i sit down uh, so I'm, I'm not really that into that so it, it kind of locks with this this big button here which you actually spin so it works quite well with gloves on and there's so many features on it where you unlock it you just hold it for a bit and when you spin uh, sorry you press it once then spin you get loads of options multi-pitch climbing is the first one that, that comes up because uh, i think there's different versions of this so, but i think that's the default for this one multi-pitch climbing now i personally don't wear a watch climbing it will only get scratched i don't like really wearing it for you know if i'm trad climbing jamming my arm and wrist into cracks and stuff like that you can let it get a little carabiner to hang it off your harness like a, a specific one for this so that's maybe an option i don't really need to track how many pitches i've done most of the routes in the uk are like a max of about six pitches I've got enough fingers for that so i'm okay i'm not climbing like tommy cordwell as i've mentioned uh you know sponsored by them and all that kind of stuff you know how many pitches on the nose or whatever not worried um so for me that's not particularly a, a sort of a, a feature i'd use but there's loads of different modes on it for you know running uh trail running swimming i think even golf and things you can download and, and customize this with all the watch face and the different modes and stuff as well you know uh that's that's just my use and like i said i don't didn't really intend it to be a proper review of it because it's for my use but the biggest thing this does really well butt hurts sitting on this pointy rock if you see me squirming um the biggest thing this does really well and beats everything else at probably two things this is the battery is the main one though 
I got this and I think about the 5th of January I was still in Spain I've been using it only as a watch really I've hardly used the GPS modes on it at all and I've charged it for the first time last night and yesterday I think it was the 8th of April my Garmin would have died long ago and this won't last that long if you're uh, using the GPS but I think even in the the highest um, refresh mode it's still like 60 hours or something and if you're using it in one of the slightly uh, less re uh, refreshing modes get like 140 hours out of it I think they're the right numbers um, but that pretty much beats every other uh, smartwatch out there so battery life absolute winner on this one it also it works off all five of the main satellite systems so it, it's very accurate it does outperform from what i've seen uh sunto and garmin in terms of tracking and it's really quick to get a fix on stuff as well so there's some really good points from it price um, i'm making no judgments on the price because this price would be a lot to some people pocket change to others and everything in between 600 quid you know like i say it, that's just factual there's no judgment it's 600 quid make of that what you will um would i would i buy it um at the moment there's one thing it doesn't do and that's the os grid reference stuff coros say they're going to update that and I, hopefully they will but until then that's a really big feature that i really want from a watch of this flavor that this doesn't do so for all the good stuff, I can't really see me wearing it over my Garmin at the moment, despite it doing a lot of stuff um, in a really nice way. I like using it, it's pleasant to use. The battery, that's just a flipping winner. Um, but for me, it's it just not quite there yet. If you're watching this in another country though, you use different um, you know, systems for grid references, then that, that massive downside for me might not be a downside at all for you because it might be perfect so you know make of that what you will as well i left i love technology in the hills and uh, the mountains i really do i think it's such a massively useful tool i just like to have a backup and i think that's the same for all things if i was only having a map and compass like we did back in the day take two these days that's a bit different because i've got my phone potentially a watch as well some people will prefer a standalone gps unit as well so maybe yeah i've probably i've only got one map and compass today i don't need any more um so yeah technology in the mountains i i'm a massive fan of it and it does make my life easier but it still doesn't mean i'm going to do that thing up there because that's still snowy and until someone invents a drone that can go and blow off all the snow from the ledges then uh today that's not one for me I hope it's been interesting. I hope it's been uh, you know, a little overview of the watch, but also just to chat through sort of my thought process for stuff like that, technology in general. Love it, don't want to rely on it. Simple as that, really. Um, but it is 2022, and there's a lot of really flipping good technology out there, isn't there? I hope the video has been interesting. I am back in the zone for videos, so hopefully going to bang out a few more. Nice now it's stopped snowing. I'm probably still going to go and retire in front of the fire at home and uh, take the dog for a stroll this afternoon. Um, fire away with any questions, as always. You know, I'm happy to answer as best I can. Say that every time. Um, and let me know what you think in the comments below in terms of technology and stuff like that. And if you've used the Coros or other watches, yeah, it'd be great to hear your opinions as well, because this is, yeah, as all these videos, only my opinion put some suggestions for future videos i've got a few more lined up as well though but yeah find us on insta facebook all that kind of stuff just gone over 10,000 on instagram so thanks very much if you follow us on there um but do fire away those questions as always of course as always though thanks very much for watching more videos coming up very soon <laughs>